and we're going to discuss ways to make your tent more enjoyable. Right. So, yeah, so many people think about how they're camping in a tent and it sounds terrible. Well, your stories of camping in a tent <laughs> as a young person seems not so enjoyable compared to what we experience. Well, it wasn't not it's not that it wasn't enjoyable. I'm just telling you how it was. Which wasn't enjoyable. <laughs> it was fun. It's just that a lot of tents are small. Smaller. Don't small one to th th what, what two to four person dome tents. Right, and they're short, so you have to, you can't really stand up in them. I can stand up in most of them because I'm short. Right. But. Um, it's not as, it's not comfortable. Yeah, and you, you kind of, it, it's a little cramped, and then there's situations where, you know, they get dirty because you bring your camping shoes or boots or whatever in them, and blah, blah, blah. And also, back in the 80s and 90s, we probably didn't have the best ground um, like a what's it called? Ground cover? Like a sleeping mat. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Or I think we had air mattresses finally at some point, but I just remember we were camping up in the UP of Michigan and waking up and there was like, I put my glasses in the pocket of the tent and I think there was like frost on my glasses and <laughs> it was just kind of cold at times. Um, but other than that, it was, it was fun and I still. As much as I can appreciate why people go camping in campers, I can also very much appreciate a tent. Well, we do. We have a small. I think it's a. It's an Ozark Trail dome tent. I think it's four person tent. I mean, two person if you're okay with each other. Four people if you really like each other. Uh, it's an eight by eight. I've slept in it one night. Uh, we are our primary tent at this point. Uh, more tents, uh, uh, other tent will be purchased, but right now it's a 10 by 12 Ozark wall tent, and it is a basically a small cabin that you uh, construct where you can walk in, you can, you know, sit down, and it, it's a small building that you pop up where you're going to camp, whether it's a public, private, or, or wherever you're going. Right. I, I like it. I like it because it is a little bit more spacious. The only problem is is that at nighttime it does get cold. Well, we don't have a, a heating source in there at this time. Right. But what I'm saying is that when you sleep in those smaller tents, your body heat does warm it up. Right. But yeah. is that the equivalent of, hey, I can't stand up, but at least I'm warm? Yes. Okay. I it, don't know. Th it's a trade-off? Well, the you're... last time we went camping, the, the first night, I was cold the yeah, whole Right. We I, but there's other reasons. Yeah. But I'm just saying that that's one thing that I miss about the smaller tents is... Your body heat warms it up pretty pretty efficiently, as is. But also, it's it's the convenience factor of being able to stand and walk in and, and do all that. So some some of the ways, and we're going to kind of this this will work for both small tents as well as wall tents or larger tents. Uh, things in which we can add to our tents to make the, in, the the camping trip more enjoyable, and that's the whole point of being out there, not being miserable and being cold, and can't wait until you get home. Even though you were can't wait until you get camping, you want your experience to be nice that you kind of don't want to go home. Right, and it is your it's your shelter. It's where you're you're going to sleep, and if you're not sleeping well on your trip, I know for me it's just going to make me frustrated and crabby. And then if I'm staying more than one night, it's it just piles on. So something like a cot, a sleeping ground pad, or an air mattress, or any combination of those is helpful. With the dome tents, they are some of the tents that you, they are very small cots in which you can backpack in. They fold up into a little sleeve and they are a couple inches off the ground or you can get a traditional like army cot where it's like 14, 16 inches off the ground. Both tents that we have, the dome tent does, can uh, uh, accommodate a standard cot uh, if you choose to do that. Just a, a four person tent, uh, a three person dome tent. A, a, an air mattress, if you are the only one using that air mattress, if it is a twin or a queen like we have, we have to reevaluate how we're going to do things in the coming camping season because every time one of us moves, the other one gets shuffled across the mattress. And then it was hanging off the one side. Right, it would slide off. Yeah, yeah. it was. And then we put it in, in the actual mattress frame, but still it's a very uncomfortable you, every time you move, the other person's we some, moving. We need some ratchet straps to keep it on the cot. Well, we slide it in, in the sleeve. That yeah, but even the last time, right, I think it shifted. Right. But we're going to remove that and go with a firm mattress 
uh, or portable mattress to where if I move or you move, we don't all move together type of thing. So if you're using a air mattress. I don't want a firm mattress. Well, something that doesn't, it's not like, you know, air mattress type of material. There's, there's so it's not like bounce. a foam, like a foam. Oh, foam, yeah. yeah. So it's not bound, bouncing around. Correct. Yeah. Um, so that fan, a, something in the summer, it gets warm, especially in the shade. Dome tents, you don't have, you know, you've got ventilation wall tents, you've got windows. You can have uh, battery operated cir- uh, fans that will circulate the air, bring the air in, bring the air through. We have a, a ceiling ceiling fan. ceiling fan that goes in our tent that uh, runs off a five watt USB port. Uh, in our power station and you can invert it to circulate the air up or down it's like $18 off Amazon and it works very well yeah I really like it um I mean I we didn't really use it but when you when we did use it did use it 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 felt good what one of these whenever you go to our our YouTube channel time by the tent you will see and those who are already on there you can navigate through some of the product reviews that we do and we chose to purchase things that maybe we wouldn't use on a every week basis, but we had it available for when we do need it. Right, and that's that's important. Is that you want to um, you want to make sure that you have something just in case sometimes, or rather have it and not use it, have but then not have it and need it. That fan is like less than a half a pound. I mean, if you're backpacking up a mountain or hundreds of miles or something that may be not something you would want to invest but if it's if you're car camping or just hiking in to a small area and you're going to pop your tent up it does work in the dome tent uh you guys got to be careful you don't set up too quick uh when you have it in the uh, the shorter tent a uh, clock as well this is, this is your thing yeah a clock you want to know what time it is we have a, 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 a one foot diameter clock that we hang on the side of the wall tent this, some of these are not applicable for dome tents, but that's something we bring, as well as pillows, inflatable pillows. Now, we will bring traditional bed bed pillows. I don't know what you call those, just traditional pillows. But we also have inflatable blow-up pillows. Uh, you know, I, I, there's traditional, sm- yeah, just regular bed pillows. They're inflatable pillows that, and then camping pillows is what they are. There's all sorts of type of camping pillows, right. hiking pillows, backpacking pillows, whatever. Some people just take their sweater or something right. and just roll it up and use it as a pillow. But I think I think the important thing is a lot of people who maybe have gone camping and then they get older and they think about sleeping uncomfortably in a tent and they're like, I'm never camping again. But at the same time, you can have these comforts. And then there's these negative Nancys who are like, it's called glamping. And it's like, it's not glamping. It's just having some comforts. So that you can actually enjoy your time instead of dreading, you know, being stuck in a hot tent with no airflow and not knowing what time it is and having a crooked neck from not sleeping on a proper pillow. And then maybe you want to be off the ground. So there's nothing wrong with that. These are perfectly fine things to want. And these are all different for everybody's uh, needs or wants. And if you're camping multiple days at a, a DNR site or a state park or a hip camp, or you have your own property in which you've set up a campsite that you just visit on a semi-regular basis and everything is already there, you're just bringing in, maybe you know, you're bringing in food or you're bringing electronics that, you know, the batteries or the, the uh, power station, things like that you don't feel comfortable leaving, you know, hours away at, at, on, on a property. So... Uh, other things in which we have found that works quite well in a dome tent and or a wall tent is a night light. Some just a small illumination of light to when you get up and you most people have to get up at least once in the middle of the night to to use the, the restroom. We have it where it plugs into our power station. We have an old one that plugs into the 12 volt. There are little lights that plug in through the USB port. And it's just like a it's a, a wand arm, and it's just enough to cast a low light in the tent, so you can see what's going on. So you don't have to have a bright light and essentially disrupt your what your brain waves because the light is too intense. I, I don't know what the 
If, if you wake up and you turn all the lights on, it's hard to get back to sleep. But if you have a small... Well, it, like, disturbs your yeah. your cycle, your sleep cycle. It, it makes your brain think that it's morning time. Right. So the lower yeah. the light to see where you're going, the better you are when when doing that. And it's worked very well. We have an um, example of that on the YouTube channel as well. Now, you have twinkly lights as something that you would suggest somebody bring in order to in- enhance their camping experience. The twinkle lights are are nice because they give you a little ambiance. Mm-hmm. And maybe maybe you like burning candles at home, but you don't want to burn candles in your tent. <laughs> and yes, yeah. you can you can get electronic candles. Yes. Or some you know, something something that's safer like that. A small small battery operated lantern or, yeah. or something like that. Yeah. But twinkle lights are nice because they can give you that dim light ambiance. It can feel relaxing. If you have kids that would be a if you have calming. Kids. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but just for yourself, maybe you're like, this is my peaceful time in nature and the sun has set and I just want to sit in the tent and enjoy myself for a little bit. That's what twinkle lights are, are good for. Or you just think they're pretty, whatever. And so there's anything, most of them are battery operated. You can get... Rechargeable, I assume. Yeah, rechargeable. But like my friend just gave me ones that I think are mushrooms or fairies or something. Uh-huh. So there's like ones that are different shapes. Um, and, so, and there's always rechargeable double and triple A batteries, so you're not consistently right. re- buying more of those. Okay, and, yeah. yeah. So anyway, um, you can find ones that are just plain. There's all sorts of different ones. There's L- LED ones. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, you have you have options for, tr- some people call it track lighting too, you can get that option as well. Right. And if that is enough illumination to where you don't have to have a night light, then that can run all night and kind of do, serve dual purpose. I mean, I'm not going to have it run all night, but some people might. Yeah. Yeah. So those are just some of the things in which, I mean, we can you can add a table, you can add some chairs if you're in a, in a wall tent, in a... Um, in a, a dome tent, the um, things in which you can add becomes a lot more limited because of the space you have available. Uh, a, an eight by eight uh, by four and a half foot is much much different than a ten by twelve by uh, seven foot. So I will say this: if this is maybe you're considering camping or your first time camping or whatever, if you're not backpacking and don't have to worry about space or weight i would go with i would err on the side of larger mm-hmm. so if the tent says four people and you're just two people get a six or an eight get a six or <laughs> yeah, an eight. Yeah. maybe not an eight but maybe a six right. um because then you have room for your your bags and things like that and you have to think about that stuff about not just yourself and where you're sleeping but also some of the stuff you bring right so with that being said, what what do you uh, suggest that you would advise people to take on their camping trip? You can send us an email at twvgshow at gmail.com. For more information, please visit the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com.